You're watching WHPR TV. Detroit Live. Colin Powell, born April 5th, 1939. Colin Powell, the first and only African American to serve as the United States Secretary of State. He was a professional soldier for 35 years and served as a chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the highest military position in the Department of Defense. He oversaw 28 crises, including Operation Desert Storm in the 1991 Persian Gulf War. He retired as a general of the Army in 1993 and was nominated by former President George W. Bush as Secretary of State. It was unanimously confirmed by the U.S. Senate. He also served in this capacity from 2001 and 2005. He has also been the recipient of numerous United States and foreign military awards and decorations. His civilian awards include the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the Congressional Gold Medal, and the Secretary of State Distinguished Service Medal. Remember him, Colin Powell. This has been a Black History Moment. I'm Joshua Crump reporting. Also, stay tuned for this life-changing message with Reverend Dr. Monica D. Crump. She's a mother, a daughter, sister, friend, medical instructor, and counselor. Welcome to the broadcast of Help Is Near Missionary Ministries. This broadcast is designed to equip individuals with practical biblical teachings from God's Word. Now introducing evangelist, preacher, teacher, Reverend Dr. Monica D. Cronk. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Wow. This person that does these things shall be like a strong and sturdy tree that is planted by a river and I will not be surprised that this man or woman will produce a lot of fruit. In other words, this person will prosper in everything that they do. Why? Because the Lord is pleased with him or her. Their testimony shall not ever be tainted nor ruined because Christ will always be the center of their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to the broadcast. Help us near missionary ministry. The table is set. The bread of life is ready. And we are ready to serve you the word of God. And I am your host, Reverend Dr. Monica D. Crunk. I am very pleased to be with you today. I invite you now to feel free to grab a pen and some paper for the purpose of taking notes. And by the end of the program, the announcer will give you some valuable information. I love writing. And some 17 years ago, I wrote a small emotional piece that I titled Tears. Listen, tears, an expression of joy and sorrow, emotions that Jesus personally experienced when dying on the cross for me and for you. Tears is a language only God can understand. Tears of joy, the birth of a baby, a wedding, salvation through Christ, and tears of pain and sorrow. For we do know that every day someone experiences this. But there's hope because in the end, there will be no more tears. Isn't that a blessing? No more tears. For God shall what? Wipe away all tears from your eyes. Revelation chapter 7 verse 17. So be patient. Tomorrow will be a better day. Hope in your salvation. Ask Jesus to come into your heart. And then... Trust Jesus to direct your path. Things will get better, I promise you. Amen. Tears represent most of the time an expression of outwardly things that is due to emotional response. This reminds me of a couple of sisters that made a terrible emotional wrong turn in their lives. And I believe we could learn a valuable lesson from their experience. During our last broadcast and program, Abraham had interceded through prayer for his nephew Lot, 
if you recall that, including Lot's family. And Lot's wife did not obey the commandment of the angels. What was the commandment? Don't look back. She was turned into a pillar of salt. The city of Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed with brimstone and with fire. Now brimstone is a chemical element known as sulfur. And sulfur when added to fire will keep the fire burning. Which is interesting because according to the scripture, anyone that is eternally separated from God will be cast into the lake of fire, brimstone and fire. And remember brimstone means sulfur. Revelation chapter 21 verse 8 and Revelation chapter 20 verse 15. Lot's wife on the day that God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah with brimstone and fire, she turned back to look at the burning city, which was something that was forbidden. For the family of four was commanded not to what? Look back once God had delivered them from wickedness and from sin. Rightfully so, once we are born again, we too should never look back to our past sins, never look back to our unprofitable deeds. How about that? Lot's wife disobeyed, and because of her actions, this would pave the way of many days of sorrow for Lot and their two daughters. It is so important to remember that a family that prays together stay in close fellowship with one another, and more importantly, close to our Almighty God. God's plan for Lot, his wife, and their two daughters was to deliver them and no doubt create a new sanctified life in the Lord. That is God's desire for you and for me as well, for us to live a sanctified, a separated life, a life free of turmoil and problems. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. I don't say that we won't have obstacles and problems, but the Lord did promise us that in him is perfect peace, and we can have that during our trials and our troubles. I once heard a woman say this about obstacles. She said that she makes her obstacles her stepping stone. And I went further to say, and all my problems that I have sometime, they're my workout room to build my faith. How about that? Let me give you another example. A little under 20 years ago, destruction and peril was upon me. And on March 20th, 1998, the Lord called me out. I like that. March 20th, 1998, that's next month. I'll be 19 years in the Lord. And he told me also not to look back. I am happy to say that through my salvation, my mother, my brother, and four sons are born again through me and my testimony. This, I must say, is a great increase, not to mention the countless of souls the Lord has drawn to himself through me. Help is near missionary ministry. Jesus not only called me out to be saved and my soul to be saved from destruction and eternal separation from him, but he has also called me to teach and preach the gospel of Jesus. So what happened to the lives of Lot and his daughters after mama was no longer in their lives? Well, according to the scripture, Genesis chapter 19, verse 30. If you have your Bibles and are able, turn to Genesis chapter 19, verse 30. Lot went up out of Zor and dwelled in the mountain and his two daughters with him, for he feared to dwell in Zor. So he left and he went to dwell in a cave, he and his two daughters. Now, I want to stop there for a moment and say, I don't believe it was the will of the Lord to take him from a home in Sodom and Gomorrah and let him live in a cave. But this was a decision that Lot decided to make because he was fearful of Zor. The firstborn of Lot bare a son and called his name Moab, which is the father of the Moabites. Namely, one person, you may recall, her name is Ruth. And the younger daughter of Lot bare a son also and called his name Ben-Ami. Now I want to backtrack a little 
and I want to share something with you. You know, when Lot and his two daughters left Sodom, there was a tragic event that took place. When Lot and his two daughters left and mother looked back and was turned to a pillar of salt, Lot and the two daughters went to the mountain and they dwelled in a cave. And it was stated in scripture, if you read the scripture, the two daughters said to one another, you know, the men that we were engaged to in Sodom are no longer, they're dead. And we do not have an offspring, someone to keep the line going. So we have an idea. Listen to what the two daughters conspired together and agreed. You know, that's power when two people agree in something. But when you agree in something that is wrong, there is no power. The two daughters agreed to get their father, Lot, drunk, to get him inebriated. And they said this, I going to get him, we're going to get him drunk. And the first night I'll go lay with dad and have sexual intercourse. And then I'll get pregnant. And then the second day we'll get him inebriated and drunk again. And then you, my sister, you'll go in and lay with our father and do the same thing. That's exactly what they conspired. And guess what happened? It did happen. Lot was drunken, didn't have any idea what his daughters had done. And they both had children. The firstborn was said to have a son. His name was Moab which is the father of the Moabites, namely the one person we just spoke about. Remember Ruth, the Moabitess? That's how she came about, through Lot and Lot's daughter. She named her firstborn Moab. And the younger daughter of Lot bare a son also and called his name Ben-Ami, who is the father of the children of Ammon, the Ammonites unto this day. So whether we have a plan for our life and the lives of our family, we can either walk with God in his plan or we can change the plan that the Lord intended for us. For Lot's daughters, they surely did change the plan because the Lord did not intend for these things to happen. In the case of Lot and his two daughters, this was not the way that this should have gone. And this was certainly not the way God intended it to be. I would like to share with you one important principle of God's kingdom. May his will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Amen. In the gospel of Matthew chapter 22, starting with verse 36, someone asked Jesus a question saying, Master, teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus replied unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Let's talk about the principle of love. We're going to take a quick break. And when we return, I want to talk to you about one principle, the principle love. So what kind of love was Jesus talking about? We'll be right back after this brief break. Amen. Welcome back to Help Us Near Missionary Ministry. I'm your host, Reverend Dr. Monica D. Crunk. Let's talk about the principle of love. 
So what kind of love? There are different forms and styles of expressing love. I will give you just four. You remember the love eros, storki or storgai, phileo and agape. Eros love, that's the love that's romantic love, a love felt particularly with the body, trembling excitement, elation, joy, intimacy. Eros is the love of the body. Storgi, that type of love, family loyalty. This is the love of community and family, often dutiful, sometimes unfeeling, but very strong nonetheless. It is a natural carnal love, but powerful enough to be a real hindrance to spiritual growth, especially when family and culture are holding you down. It is a love that, will, that may pull you towards lesser path. Phileo love is the love of the soul. It is an easy love and affection. It is bent towards our natural taste and preferences. It embodies culture and beliefs. It's about the friendship you feel towards people like you, that like you, with the same interests, social graces, and style. Now what about the last one, agape love, unconditional love with stick ability. This love is more of a parental, mature, sacrificial kind of love. I heard once put in a beautiful way, to take pleasure in the thing, prize it above all things, be unwilling to abandon it or do without it. This type of love sacrifices any and everything for this love. For God so what? Love the world that he sacrificed and gave his only begotten son. Wow, now that is the top of the line love. Jesus replied unto him that thou shalt love the Lord thy God with what? All thine heart and with all thine soul and with all thine mind. This is the first and great commandment. Did you know that Jesus says that, you know what? You don't even really have to worry about any of the commandments, the other commandments. This is the great commandment. If you would just do this commandment, you can hang all the rest of the law on this because the second is to love thy neighbor as you love yourself. In other words, do to others the way you want to be treated. Now, I like that. That is something that I practice on a daily basis. And if I practice it long enough, it becomes permanent in my life. To love with all your heart, loving Jesus emotionally makes me think about Psalm 5110, creating me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. To love with all my soul is a love, is, this is a loving Jesus with your life. Plan your life with Jesus in the center. How about that? Now that's a blessing. This makes me think of Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. To love with all my mind, what do you think about with that? Loving Jesus with your thoughts makes me think about Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue, which means goodness, and if there be any praise, think on these things. I like that. Now that's something that we ought to practice on a daily basis because I always say this, that flesh, that's another person. And a lot of times I have to tell my flesh to sit down. On a daily basis, I have to tell my flesh to sit down because I want my spirit man to rule because my spirit man is what you see right here now. It's beautiful. But my flesh, there is no good thing in it. It will tear up the forest. Believe me. Amen. Work in progress. Remember when Jesus spoke to his disciples 
and said in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 14, verse 26, if any man come after me, he must hate not, he must hate his brother, he must hate his father, he must hate his mother, his wife, his children, and brethren, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. In other words, he says, except you hate your mother, your father, your wife, your husband, your children, anyone, you cannot be my disciple. So what was Jesus saying when he used the word hate? Because when we think of the word hate, it's not a pretty word. Hate implies in this particular message, hate implies the meaning was love less. Hate means to love less. If any man would come after me, Jesus said, and love less, he must love less his father, his mother, love less his wife, his children, brethren and sisters. And yes, he must love less himself. He cannot be my disciple. This is that agape love, to have more favor for God than anything. For, you know what I think about that? If I love the Lord with all my heart, mind, and soul, then I'm going to do right to everyone. So I understand what Jesus was saying. Now, there is no question about how God feels about you and about me. However, do you think the Lord desires for you and for me to share with him how we feel about him? Yes, I believe he does. Which one of the loves describes you and your relationship with the Almighty God? Be truthful. I believe Jesus wants us to express how we feel about him. You want to know how I know this? Because he asked Peter, do you remember? Do you love me, Peter? son of Jonas. John chapter 21 verse 15 through 17. And Jesus had dinner with Peter. Jesus said to Simon Peter, he said, Simon Peter, do you love me more than fishing? Do you love me more than anything and anyone? Peter said to Jesus, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. Now, Peter continued, well, Jesus continued to ask Peter three times. He asked him, do you love me? And Peter kind of got a little, he kind of got a little flustered about that. He said, Lord, you know I love you. He said, well, if you love me with that agape love, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. In other words, go tell many, go tell everyone about me, Jesus. If you are born again, what kind of love do you have for the master of your life? The harvest is truly plenteous, have you heard? But the laborers are few. We must pray to the Lord of the harvest for the laborers for his field. We need laborers for the Lord's field. And more importantly, we must become one of God's main laborers in his field. And you feeding God's people and feeding the unsaved is just the work that the Lord wants us to do. Now, this is love. If you are born again, you know that you have a great chance of winning the people around you if you show what toward them. Show love, show kindness, show grace. Allow people to know that they can trust you. Amen? I like that. You will win souls every day. Yes, I am a soul winner. And this has been my aim and goal since I met Jesus March 20th, 1998, 19 years ago. And if you are not born again, today is your day. Invite Jesus to come into your house, your life. Invite him to live in you. Amen. The Lord has blessed Help Us Near Missionary Ministry to bring forth his word on radio also. 
So be sure to tune in and listen to the broadcast Monday through Friday at 430 on WMKM Gospel 1440. And you know, I just want to say this. If there is someone watching and said, you know, what must I do to be saved? Ask Jesus to come and live with you in your heart. Invite him in. You remember when Jesus was born in the inn through Mary and Joseph? Remember, it was reported there was no room in the inn. Well, is there room in Jesus for you, for him to be born in you? Ask him to come into your heart, and he definitely will. Amen? WMKM Gospel 1440 is where you can listen every day, Monday through Friday. As always, I am delighted to serve you the Word of God. Help us near Missionary Ministry ask for you to please prayerfully consider sending a financial blessing today. Did you know when you bless the ministry with your financial gift, of any size, you are blessing God, and we say thank you. Help is near, we'll keep the spiritual light burning because I want to win souls for Christ through Jesus, don't you? Your love offering and financial blessing will keep the light shining by the teaching of God's word right here on this broadcast, and I know for sure the Lord will bless you for it. For the Lord loveth a cheerful giver. If you would like prayer, don't be shy. Call me. Or what about sharing your testimony with us? Write or call me. Our number is 248-636-5793. That's 248-636-5793. I'm Reverend Dr. Monica D. Crunk with Help Is Near Missionary Ministry. Until next time, remember, fellowshipping with God is the best part of life. Amen. This has been a Help Is Near Missionary Ministry broadcast with Reverend Dr. Monica D. Crunk. Continue watching her every week and feel free to contact our ministry with your prayer, praise, and testimony. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, please prayerfully consider sowing a financial seed into the ministry. Our address is P.O. Box 432-032, Pontiac, Michigan, 4843. By phone, 248-636-5793. That's 248-636-5793. Or contact us by email, helpisnearministry at gmail.com. Until next time, remember, help is near.